take the worst times to go away and have a little bit of vacation time to myself, some breaks away from content, because while I was gone, of course, a lot happened, but today we actually got a decent bit revealed here for season five and the upcoming content between Cold War, Warzone, and everything else in between. So they're gonna break down what we learned and what you should know about. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to anything in particular with season five here in either Cold War or Warzone? Are you guys liking the CX-9 that was released here as of this week? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Season 5, Warzone, Cold War, you name it, anything COD related, we got you covered here on the channel. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. But said, let's jump right into it. So when it comes to this past week, timing has kind of been thrown out the window. What we think we know of in terms of regular old patterns for releases and reveals has kind of gone by the wayside. As we'll talk about here in this video, catching up since I am just getting home now back in the office, we'll talk about some of the stuff that debuted here as the last couple of days but today season five was basically all but fully revealed here with things like a roadmap coming and everything that details all the content we can expect to see over the course of the next coming weeks here usually that stuff is kind of reserved for the monday before an update but now we have it one week out at this point we saw earlier in the week the cinematic here for season five we saw today a trailer that comes along for the new mode of double agent that showed a little bit of details here that you may have missed if you didn't see the roadmap but a lot of stuff debuting here just again Again, kind of out of that normal time frame. But starting with this roadmap here, we actually get a lot in terms of what we can see for multiplayer, zombies, warzone, and other things like that. For multiplayer on the Cold War side of things, it actually, for the first time in a while, doesn't seem like half bad of an offering when it comes to content. Now, yes, there are a handful of different remakes here at this, but at the same time, it's the most maps we've seen in quite some time being introduced in a single season. Echelon is going to be that map introduced in the 6v6 format and coming at launch as it is slightly Slums and Showroom. Slums being a remake, of course, from Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and Black Ops 4. Black Ops 3, though, being that sort of back in black pre-order bonus you had to get. Showroom being a new map here for Gunfight. And then later in the season, we'll see Drive-In and Zoo, both seemingly those remakes from Black Ops 1. Both maps that I really enjoyed back in the day. So very curious to see how these play out here on the current generation hardware, what they look like and how they play like with today's game. Because not all of these remakes do play exactly the same since pacing is different from the original games they're first introduced in, in some regards. But we also see on the multiplayer side of things, Double Agent, which honestly looks kind of cool, dare I say. I haven't really been all that into Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer the last couple of months, but this may draw me back in to play a little bit more here of this. Basically, you're set up on teams here to plant and defuse bombs, but you also have players that are those sort of double agents that you can either go along with it or betray your teammates, and then you have players that are meant to scout out who the double agent actually is and eliminate them before they can do damage. Honestly, looks pretty cool. Demolition coming later on in the season as well. Zombies, we have a new outbreak region of Collateral. We have the outbreak vehicle of the tank coming. We have a grapple gun coming in Zombies, which will be interesting to see if that ever makes its way over into multiplayer. We have a new perk of Death Perception, the Tesla Storm field upgrade, and the transport new outbreak objective. On the Warzone side of things, we're going to see a couple of things, though it doesn't really give us a whole ton in terms of details in regards to these, but we'll see a new mobile broadcast station here at this or multiple of those so as you saw in the cinematic or as we'll cover in the cinematic the broadcast station the numbers that's the big key part here out of season five and that sort of messaging that theme so having a broadcast station for dance multiple of them it's gonna play into something here may give you some good loot as well landing there we'll see a new mode of clash and rush as the new gulag following suit of seeing those changes to the gulag here with the past map that we saw introduced in the past season but they also detailed we'll see two new perks of combat scout and tempered with combat scout sounding very interesting this being described by the color duty blog details that operators will receive a burst of infield intel as damaging an enemy briefly highlights the foe in bright orange and automatically pings them whether it's confirming a call out or finding someone cooped up in a building behind penetrable cover this perk only grows stronger if the operator behind it can communicate effectively to their squad mates now based off of that wording it kind of sounds like the oracle from call of duty ghosts or kind of like the snapshot grenade that you have in modern warfare and Warzone, but based upon dealing damage. That would be incredibly powerful if that is something that ends up happening, and I don't want to say it will be too OP if it is something that is introduced via, say, the Tier 2 slot in perks, because then you have a lot of competition, but there's just not enough information to fully come down to my thoughts on this just yet, but it's interesting. We'll go with that. 
The other one that they mentioned, of course, is Tempered, which looks actually, as they described, to fundamentally change armor values within Warzone. So right off the bat, you're only going to be able to use two armor plates as opposed to three, but each armor plate absorbs more. So with this, it seems like it comes down to the same values, if my math is correct, where each armor plate then absorbs 75 points of damage as opposed to the standard 50 but you end up conserving more armor at that point. So say you have a satchel, you don't burn through three of them if you have to replenish everything, you only have to burn through two. So long-term, that actually helps you a lot with conserving your armor, and that seems to be the sort of play here at this, and why it would be something that would be valuable to a player. Though they did confirm this is going to be coming in the perk two slot, so again, adding competition there amongst that tier of perks within Warzone, but also making me kind of think that Combat Scout won't be happening in tier two. We'll see new operators of Kitsune, Striker, and Hudson. Striker and Hudson coming in season, a new battle pass, new weapons of the EM2, the Tech 9, the Kane, the Marshall, and the Flamethrower as both a support weapon and also a score streak within multiplayer for Black Ops Cold War. And then finally, a mid season update of the numbers. What that entails, your guess is as good as mine, but the official Call of Duty blog states whatever broadcast Perseus set up is causing the red doors to become more volatile than ever before as operators are now reporting redacted in their post-mission briefings. Beware of these doors sending you to locations other than the main room we all thought as its lone destination point, and above all else, keep your head. This event may have something to do with the mobile broadcast stations seen around Verdansk, but at this time, we cannot declassify further intel for fear of double agents. So that seems to be something that looks to play more so into, again, the red doors, maybe building and expanding upon that, like how we saw the bunkers being that sort of main focal point for Easter eggs last year with Verdansk in the current day. So we'll see how this all works out, but I'm also wondering if this has anything to do with a potential Vanguard reveal, as the Season 5 key art actually has some of of that Japanese styled text, if you translate some of that, it ends up coming out to say Vanguard is coming. That being, of course, the code name for COD 2021. So we'll see what all of this ends up being in time, but very interesting, no less, if you ask me. Now, that's the content for Season 5 here that we got debuted here and teased to us, but we're more than likely going to be having stuff coming up over the next couple of days here, giving us more previews of content here coming up and maybe trailers, blog posts, things like that, but I would absolutely expect some other stuff to come here over the course of the next seven days, given that, again, we mentioned this is way out of character here for a reveal of this kind of nature to happen a week out. Usually we see teasers and everything happen a week out, but usually this stuff is reserved for the Monday before. So what, four days before that or something? That's kind of strange. So I'm expecting more to come here, but that's what was introduced as of today. But as we know of, this hasn't been a quiet week. It's been quite eventful here in regards to some of the things we ended up seeing. We saw that new key art imaging for season five debuted a couple of days ago. We got that new cinematic, which is pretty awesome if you ask me as well. Kind of then turning the majority of the operatives that we see in the Black Ops universe against those that we thought were the good guys, given that the dubbed Dragovich protocol ends up utilizing that number of broadcast and turning so many more double agents than we thought were possible. So I'm very curious to see where that story goes here with this. And I'll be totally honest with you, man. My favorite part about Cold War as of lately has not been playing it, but really just paying attention to the story, trying to dissect it, because I really do think that even though we're not really getting more outside of the campaign, that seasonal progression we're getting in terms of story is incredibly interesting to me. So I love that. I'm very much so looking forward to what happens next here and where we go between this and Warzone. So we'll have to wait and see how that all turns out. But of course, we ended up getting that big thing, the CX-9, finally introduced alongside Soap. The CX-9, if you don't want to buy the bundle here with this, you of course have the opportunity to unlock this organically via getting two long shot kills while using an SMG in five different matches in Modern Warfare or Warzone. Now, that was the first bit of information in regards to the CX-9, but it actually was a part of some weapon tuning already within Warzone, in which today we end up seeing the Krig-6 for Black Ops Cold War have a lower torso multiplier decrease from 1.1 to 1 and a maximum damage range decrease from 1,500 units to 1400 units. The CX-9 ended up seeing an increase to the mid-range damage from 20 to 21, and an increased headshot multiplier from 1.4 to 1.45. Now, personally, I haven't quite had any hands-on time with this as of recording it. Again, I quite literally just got home from the airport, but the CX-9 getting a buff is interesting, and I'm curious to see where this goes here, how this affects the meta. But that was introduced, and of course, as a result of the CX-9 being introduced, you do have that operator, finally, of soap introduced here, coming along with the Highlands soap skin, the the mission to unlock multiple layers of that skin, the Ciroc CX-9, the 1911, the Ice Pick melee weapon, the To the Top Charm, the Point Taken finishing move, the Scan the Vista calling card, the Cold Depths emblem, and the Clean Cut Spray. 
Now, this, of course, is for 2,400 COD points. It's finally introduced here, but do with this what you will, man. Like I said, right now, I'm in that very weird spot where I don't want to give inadvertent attention to the shop, given that all things going on right now with the Activision Blizzard lawsuit. If you want to check it out, if you want to get it, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already picked it up if you care at all about it because we're late to talk about this but it's there. It's something that is available right now for players that want to play with the CX-9, that want to play with SOAP, whatever the case may be, it's available. If you do so, can you use code ESPRESSO in the in-game supporter creator function? Sure, but again, I don't really care. I don't really want to highlight this stuff at the moment, but that said, that is the rest of the update that I wanted to talk about. That's the other big stuff here that came out of this week and what we kind of needed to catch up on. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Are you guys looking forward to season five content here within? Warzone, Cold War, Zombies, whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down below. I know that I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing this new content here in Cold War, surprisingly. The double agent mode doesn't necessarily look like it's something that is something to grind out or anything like that, but for the first time in a while, it kind of looks genuinely fun. It kind of looks like some of those old Gary's Mods modes like Trouble in Terrorist Town or something like that, where you can just get a lot of funny moments out of that, some hilarious banter and things like that. So curious to see how that plays out. Of course, Warzone, you guys know I'm very intrigued on where the story is going, what new features will be coming. So let me know your thoughts on how you feel down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. So I'm a single thing all things Warzone, Cold War, anything COD related, especially as we gear up for season five, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get comments out of YouTube, practically on both those. So if you have a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.